great pleasure and honor to welcome you on behalf of the organizers at the today's seminar, the opportunities and challenges of the transport and infrastructure cooperation within the Free Seas Initiative. This is the third seminar on this format that we are organizing our embassy together with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Lithuania, and we are very happy that you honored us with your presence today. And now I would like to ask Ambassador of Poland to the Republic of Lithuania, Mr. Konstanty Radziwiłł, to take the floor. So it looks that we are uh, starting with, with the summit, Ambassador. <laughs> Excellences, dear guests, it is my real pleasure and honor to welcome you at the third Spring Political and Business Three Seas Initiative Seminar organized by the Embassy of Poland in Vilnius in collaboration with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Lithuania. Three years ago, in April uh, 2022, when we organized our seminar for the first time, the democratic world was entering into the new era caused by the Russian brutal aggression on Ukraine and its disastrous consequences. The invasion of February 24, uh, 2022, naturally has also affected the Three Seas Initiative region in many ways. There is no doubt that the role of the Central Eastern Europe on the global scene has increased irreversibly, also from the economic point of view. In this context, it has at least three strategic consequences for us and our economies. First, the opinion formulated by leaders in Warsaw and other regional capitals, like Vilnius obviously, resonates stronger among the world's public opinion and political leaders, what has also an impact on the perception of the economy of the region as a whole. Second, the economy of the region, one the most industrialized in the world and an engine of EU economic growth, proved resilient. It remained a safe place for foreign investment and in the same time a hub for Ukraine's support and reconstruction. Just to mention that Poland has recently been called by Bloomberg a key connector, benefiting from the reshuffling of supply chains in response to US-China tensions. And third, Poland and the region have become a military hub for supporting Ukraine and ensuring the military mobility of the allied forces in the region which has also an explicit economic dimension. Excellences, dear guests, in this context, it is crucial to stress the role of our year-long determination to develop critical energy, transport, and digital infrastructure along the north-south axis. Just to mention the Baltic pipe and the LNG terminals in Świnoujście and Klaipeda, supplemented with Gipl connection enabling pumping gas between Poland, Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia that allow to import non-Russian gas to the region. Let me use this opportunity to thank once again the Lithuanian partners uh, for their solidarity in operating activities of the LNG terminal in Klaipeda which carry, carries a very significant name, independence. Speaking of partnerships, I also have to mention Poland's commitment to pursuing cooperation with our Three Seas Initiative associated participating states and EU candidates, Moldova and Ukraine. Here, we welcome the initiative of Lithuania to include possible Moldovan and Ukrainian 
projects on the list of 3CE's initiative, priority projects. These cross-border projects, often financed from EU funds, will help to upgrade and integrate the infrastructure networks with those of the region and the EU and thus facilitate the accession process. Let me indicate a few examples of the projects implemented thanks to the EU and national funds in the region. A good illustration of what we can achieve when we act jointly is the Via Carpatia route linking Thessaloniki in Greece and Klaipeda in Lithuania. It was included in the Trans-European Transport Network, TENT, in no other way than by, by our joint efforts to which 3C's initiative provided a platform. Another such example could become the VIA and Rail Baltica linking Poland, Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia. I think that we all in this room share a common interest in making those projects happen possibly soon. Ladies and gentlemen, as an ambassador of Poland to Lithuania, I am especially delighted that this year the ninth Three Seas Initiative Forum will take place in Vilnius. Looking back at an excellent management of the NATO summit, which Lithuania hosted last year, I'm convinced that also the upcoming Three Seas Initiative Vilnius Summit, as well as, as, well as accompanying Three Seas Initiative Business Forum, will substantially contribute to the tangible effects. Therefore, as a kind of warm-up before the actual summit, we decided to invite you today to the seminar dedicated to the infrastructural and transport cooperation within the Three Seas Initiative region. However, before I will ask our panelists to challenge the quite provocative, provocative panel entitled My Way or a Highway, can infrastructure deficiencies on the Three Seas Initiative region be a driving factor for creating modern connections tailored for the 21st century? I would like to thank all our distinguished panelists, both from the politics and business, for joining us today to share their, their unique and valuable insights. I would also like to express my special gratitude for Ambassador Gediminas Varvuolis, who from the very beginning is the co-host of our Three Seas Initiative events and the good spirit of regional connectivity. Thank you very much. Last but not least, as we have already entered the Holy Week, I would like to use this opportunity to wish you all a blessed and joyful Easter. Thank you for your attention. Mr. Ambassador, thank you for this welcome word. And now I would like to ask Ms. Ambassador Varvalis and our distinguished panelists to take the floor. Maybe that's good morning. Labas uh, Ritas, Jindobri. My name is Gediminas Varvalis. I'm uh, ambassador at large for connectivity and the three seas initiative, as it has been said by, by Ambassador Radzevil. And Ambassador, thank you for your really, really kind words. Um, and um, yeah, let me start uh, by really expressing my profound appreciation to the to the Polish Embassy for for this outstanding cooperation. And it, indeed, this tradition has been running already for three years. Uh, every year we had a different subject. And, um, uh, and this year we are going to tackle transport. But, but I think um, uh, the fact that we, uh, you know, 
when we organized it for the first time, we, we didn't really think that it will become a tradition. So I think the fact that it has become a tradition also, also speaks uh, volumes about the level of cooperation between uh, Lithuania and Poland. And we're very glad to come back one year later again uh, in these gorgeous uh, premises of, uh, of, the, of the Polish Embassy in, in Vilnius. So, really, serdecznie panie ambasadorze, szanowni państwo. Chciałbym serdecznie podziękować za tradycyjną współpracą i, i, i gościnność. Uh, a few introductory remarks maybe from, from, from my side. Uh, so the Three Seas Initiative, I'm, I'm very glad that we have this map on the screen. I think uh, when we speak about the Three Seas Initiative, the map matters a lot, a lot, because uh, uh, the Three Seas Initiative is all about geography, uh, economic geography of, of our region. Um, yeah, we, we all know probably in this room about the basics of the Three Seas Initiative. It's a, a platform that focuses on transport, energy, energy and, and digital connectivity. It has this uh, motto that is very important to, to remember, that it's a politically inspired, but very much economically and even uh, commercially driven platform. Uh, it is also an indigenous connectivity platform because we also uh, we heard about you know 14 plus one that I sometimes that were brought to our region from outside players. This one, this platform was born in the region, and and this is uh, one of the the beauties that it has. It also has a migrating geography in a way because the last summit was in Bucharest. Now the summit uh, has moved back north, uh, and and Lithuania is going to. To, to host the um, the next summit, uh, as it has been said in in Bucharest at the, at the uh, in the Bucharest summit declaration, the initiative has reached its uh, uh, political and uh, economic uh, maturity, uh, and uh, um, I think also it has reached a new relevance uh, because nobody thought uh, nine years ago that it, when it all started that the north-south will become a new normal in our region. At that time, we were pretty much still focused on east-west connections. Nowadays, after this you know, brutal Russian uh, aggression uh, and the uh, total change of geopolitics, the north-south has become really an indispensable, uh, very indispensable axis in, in our region. So it's extremely, it has become extremely re relevant, I believe. Um, and. Uh, yeah, another beauty of the initiative that it's uh, that it is uh, project based. Uh, some projects have already been mentioned by by His Excellency. We have those iconic names via Carpathia, via Baltica, via um, uh, Rail Baltica. Also, uh, 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 this uh, 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 other some other projects, 5G corridors, uh, uh, rail to sea. You know, from Constanza to Gdansk. So it's it's all about those those big scale um, infrastructure projects uh, and but maybe before we deepen the uh, we dip in the in the in the in the discussion let me also say just a, a few words on the preparations for the summit because i think this is what what might uh, what might interest the audience um, so uh, preparations are actually in full swing uh, we are expecting for uh, um, up to around 20 delegations from 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 countries uh, from the TSI countries, but also some strategic partners, some associate partic uh, associated participating states. Um, the um, draft declaration, declaration is, is being finalized now uh, in the Sherpa format. Um, Lithuania as a host country also tabled uh, a couple of uh, uh, speci special initiatives, one on cybersecurity, another one on, on green finances. Um, uh, those initiatives, they are mostly you know they they offer some 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 soft uh, measures uh, for for the member states like creating networks uh, sh sharing best practices uh, also specifically on how to implement some eu policies and directives uh, uh, so so there are those initiatives uh, we are also um, expecting quite a number of side events uh, during the summit and the business forum up to 20 side events of, of various nature from from 
digital connectivity, uh, software development, energy security, clean tech, uh, also to academia cooperation. Even there, there will be one side event of on cultural, on creating a cultural network of the Three Seas Initiative. So it also. Uh, shows you to what extent the ecosystem of Tracy's initiative has really evolved over uh, over the years and, and and we are very happy actually about it uh, yeah but today today we are uh, here to focus on transport one of the key um, uh, pillars of the Tracy's initiative um, if you look at, at the list of those uh, priority projects that ambassador has mentioned actually you will very quickly realize that uh, uh, the most of them, majority of them, they actually uh, pertain to the transport sector, up to up to up to 50 percent. Uh, so the three C's transport connectivity is really at the heart at the heart of our project, uh, and it's perfectly understandable because um, uh, the original uh, uh, objective of the three C's initiative has been to connect, uh, to to fill the infrastructure gap between the western part of uh, Europe and the central part of Europe. Uh, however, as, uh, as it has been mentioned, in the last uh, couple of years, the north-south has become really the new normal in the region. So my first general question to whoever wants to, to jump in first, uh, what is more challenging in your opinion? Uh, uh, and do you see any contradiction between developing the infrastructure along the north-south axis and fostering connections between the you know the original objective between the western part and the central eastern part of europe so a very general question for whoever would like to uh, so east west versus north south minister yes thank you Gideminas. Uh, let me also join you in thanking uh, polish ambassador and the embassy for putting together this event it's a really good occasion to um, to warm up before the summit uh, where all those issues will be discussed uh, not only at the highest level of uh, of uh, heads of uh, states and governments uh, but also at side events uh, uh, so today, I think we have a good chance to uh, to well put the main accents uh, uh, and and to uh, focus uh, uh, on those uh, discussions also, which uh, hopefully also bring some conclusions uh, uh, later in 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 few weeks. So answering your question, I, I'm not sure you can actually prioritize and say this is uh, more important uh, to have attention on uh, on the east-west or north-south. Uh, both directions are important. Uh, diversification is key. The problem uh, is that uh, before the Three Seas Initiative, uh, uh, we didn't have enough balance. So thanks, I think, also to this uh, initiative, to the political efforts, to uh, concentration of, of uh, joint actions, uh, we now have more balance. And uh, 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 thankfully, uh, uh, now when we need this interconnectivity north-south, uh, uh, already have uh, uh, some results on the table. So uh, some, some uh, parts of infrastructure built uh, physically uh, and after uh, Russia invaded Ukraine, we obviously now see very, very clearly how important that initiatives uh, were. So uh, I think also Brussels sees that and uh, the institutional process is not so far, uh, so fast. And uh, uh, but I think it, it is appreciated more and more and uh, specific uh, uh, instruments uh, are following and will follow. Uh, also with the funding, I believe. Uh, but uh, as uh, for Three Cs initiative, I think we should be speaking about uh, uh, also alternatives uh, for specifically for financing. Uh, uh, our region is uh, catching up with the rest of Europe very fast. Uh, with the perspective of uh, Ukraine joining EU, it is even more obvious that we will be net contributors to, to EU budget. So obviously, uh, Brussels as a source for funding is, uh, is uh, very fast, uh, uh, well, uh, ending its, its uh, attractiveness, uh, so to say. 
and we should think about alternatives. So mobilizing private money, uh, attracting private capital, this is what uh, also um, should be a focus of this format. How to do it, what, uh, what business wants uh, in order to invest and uh, safely allocate the, the capital, uh, I believe that's a, a good topic for discussions as well. Thank you, Minister. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much for uh, for the opportunity to participate in this panel in the, such a distinguished colleagues and uh, so happy to be in uh, back to Vilnius and uh, um, you know I'm uh, hmm, it's it's kind of, uh, if there are some young people in the audience considering becoming diplomats I, I really recommend it I think because uh, it's it's just such a, a broad uh, array of subjects that we have to delve into. Yesterday I was in Warsaw I was talking in, in a, participating in a very intense discussion about 17th century kind of uh, history and uh, and uh, and today it's the the railways and uh, so it's uh, but I'll do my best uh, I'm uh, I'm coming from the uh, uh, office of the president of Poland I'm the uh, advisor for foreign policy and uh, and I I, I felt uh, I I really wanted to come here because uh, the issues are very important but also our president has been from the very start of this initiative so so much um, uh, supporting it and uh, and uh, because uh, because uh, he saw that the, the, it was in the it's it's really in the interest of all of us to 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 to, to further this, uh, this this cooperation and uh, um, I spent more than 20 years away from Europe so looking kind of uh, in Asia in, in America and so on and uh, at the kind of global landscape it's uh, for for investors for development potential I, I i'm really struck constantly i'm, I'm very genuinely saying this uh, i i don't think that there are many regions like ours in the world with such tremendous potential we are very lucky i think we are close to each other with uh, such societies with so much uh, uh, dynamism so much uh, education uh, competence in in all across different fields uh, women in entrepreneurship ict you know uh, 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 working hard, uh, ambitious, and so on, and I think we have. Uh, and the question today is, uh, mm, how do we tap into this potential? Right? It's uh, do we build this uh, east-west connections, north-south? Uh, what is more important? I, I completely agree. I don't think uh, we can say which one is more important. It's uh, it's just that I think the, the the status quo is such that we have managed over the years. Uh, to uh, to develop uh, the east uh, west connections quite uh, to a satisfactory level uh, of course we, we have to continue developing it but uh, but there are f so many more challenges on the north south uh, axis and uh, and if we do not build this i think we will never tap into this potential uh, we 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 really have a lot of uh, business uh, excited about cooperation uh, we know building value chains um, finding suppliers and so on so if our companies are only going to be the suppliers to other entities uh, in other parts of europe i mean that, that then then maybe we shouldn't think in a comprehensive way but if we want to grow and develop and uh, really become an engine of growth and to, to 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 raise to the level of our ambition and and, and have our companies be becoming uh, globally most competitive right? then I think we have to look. Uh, we have to have a 360 degree angle and uh, and, and and really um, develop uh, all through. Minister Gerwell, thank you very much, and thank you for bringing in the the, the global uh, context. Because uh, I still want to stay on a general questions uh, uh, level uh, for the for the time being and uh, expand my question and. Uh, also bringing the, the bigger picture of uh, global supply chains because uh, of course we we hear a lot about uh, the, uh, the, re the the new relevance also for for other again global supply chains such as Transcaspian route and the, the middle corridor and now recently last fall uh, the G7 launched this uh, uh, EMEC India Middle East uh, Europe uh, transport the at least the idea of, of this new transport corridor uh, so maybe also, someone could, could uh, comment on whether these new corridors, in connection to the, with the three Cs, can really offer a, a, a genuine alternative for the very traditional uh, uh, supply chains, the northern route, you know, through Russia. This was what really 
kept us connected to, to the Asian market. So can we together, you know, like uh, Three Seas Initiative and, and those initiatives coming from G7, from, from our neighbors on the, around the Black Sea, can we create a solid alternative? Okay, thank you uh, for inviting us here. Um, I come from Croatia, uh, Ministry of Transport. Uh, we are honored uh, to be here. Uh, Croatia is the co-founder of Three Seas Initiative, and we are really dedicated uh, to strengthening our nine-year-old effort uh, to strengthen the co transport connectivity. Uh, you mentioned um, north, south axis, western and central eastern um, connection to Europe. Um, we also, as colleagues said, don't think there are any um, differences. Both really matters because this initiative is also like a vital bridge for connectivity. Uh, I think we think that uh, north and southern axis will be has a big potential from now on. Maybe uh, previously it was more oriented uh, Western Europe to, towards uh, Central Eastern Europe, but of course all those new axes and transport corridors which are changing now. We will discuss this later. Uh, will also globally uh, change the perspective. Thank you, thank you, uh, Director General, and maybe Gitis from another Ministry of Transport here domestically. <laughs> okay, well, um, it's a, it's a difficult question, uh, and it's a difficult task. Um, I think that where we would start from, or you know, to 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 launch some of the ideas to to towards the audience. Now, if we were to discuss about transport like ten years ago, normally we wouldn't we wouldn't have you know in 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 Vilnius a discussion with Croatia or uh, you know Hungary or Poland yes but not so much intensively and I'm really happy that we are having this discussion especially in this embassy here because that actually is you know shows to you how much important the north south has become and it's not so much a contradiction between uh, north south and east west you know east west it was already said here um, the, the transport connections the infrastructure the routes the, the corridors you know they're already there so it's not that we have to do something we are so much adapted towards east west except that when we now face the reality we have to also face the challenge of uh, as the minister mentioned to you know developing north south and transport is known for being very inflexible very heavy you know very uh, difficult for you know to adapt to changes but still i'm very happy that we had actually successfully that that's my opinion we had ar already proved that notion wrong you know just to give you one example you know diversification is very important uh, we in Lithuania we, we lost a lot of you know the, if you ask businesses they lost a lot of cargo they lost a lot of benefits and and and, and money etc but they all also see a lot of opportunities just and uh, you know that's actually what inspires us a lot I, I see uh, Lithuanian railways are here in the within the audience you know just to give you one example um, we had Lithuanian railways had launched uh, a train, passenger train from from Vilnius to what's Kaunas and then Warsaw and then Krakow, and that train alone, within one single year, generated more than one hundred thousand passengers. That's, I mean, the success of the train is twice, you know, the intensity of the use of the train is twice, nearly twice as bigger as the usual Lithuanian railways trains are used. You know, the intensity of how many passengers are on the train. What I mean by this is how much the public is willing to have this north-south connection. It's, it's not about business here, it's about, you know, the perception, how people are willing to, you know, get your neighbor, you know, know, know your neighbor better at south and, and vice versa. This is actually what really inspires us a lot. Yes, it is challenging. Uh, I really understand, I concur with what Minister mentioned. Uh, 
we face a huge challenge of financing. And yes, uh, we also are, are aware that, you know, even the usual funds that we are using are not uh, un infinite. They also will face uh, some shortcomings. But uh, what we see already is that the private sector is ready to come. The private sector is very much interested. And I, I know that there is a lot of business to be made. That's why they are coming. So the three C's is key and, you know, in attracting the private sector. And here is the, you know, the last point of your, of your question. You know, the East, West and North, South, I think that if we discuss here in Lithuania and if we discuss that in Croatia, that might mean a bit different things. Mm -hmm. But when you go a bit global, mm -hmm. uh, it, it all becomes very clear. You know, we had been uh, some weeks ago in Japan yes. with the Three Seas Initiative. And I was really very, very much surprised how much, how, how many Japanese companies are willing to come, to invest, to do business here using the three C's initiative as a platform, they were very much interested in, you know, n knowing better what is Real Baltica, what is Real Via Baltica, what's Via Carpatia, you know, how are the transport networks outlined in this region? And this proves that, you know, the three C's is not only a regional format, it's not only a European, it actually it's a global, global format that helps connecting the East, west on the global scale but north south at the regional scale so connection to baltic sea uh, baltic sea seaports uh, towards you know southern part of europe to croatia uh, greece and and turkey and then connecting the uh, uh, you know central asia and european transport corridors is very important and that's where we stand today Thank you, Gitis, and also thank you for proving the theory of inflexibility of transport wrong. <laughs> transport infrastructure can also be flexible. Uh, now, let me turn to our two guests coming from the southern part of the Three Seas Initiative and uh, the kind of middle, sort of central part, uh, Poland. So, uh, your countries are the, um, the founding parents of the Three Seas Initiative. Uh, Poland and Croatia was very much behind this project. Uh, so, a question to both of you: um, In you know, uh, in the eve of the of the Vilnius summit, um, a, a bit general, but still, what fr from this historic perspective, uh, what is your take on the record of the Three Seas Initiative? Has it been successful, and what are its main uh, political and uh, economic uh, achievements? And maybe uh, one uh, specific. Uh, Sub question to, to, to Minister Gerwell. So we heard that this fresh news uh, last year, which I think is public already, that Poland is going to undertake uh, the organization of the, uh, basically will take over the chairmanship of the, the Three Seas Initiative uh, for the next year. So what is your initial, initial thinking about your you know, potential priorities for the next year for the Three Seas Initiative? So a historic question for, to both of you uh, on, on the record and on the perspective specifically to you, Mr. Minister. Thank you very much uh, for this question. I um, I confirm that that we are going to organize the the, the, the summit and uh, you know to, to take up this uh, important task. We are very honored. Uh, as you know, it's uh, we we treat this very very seriously, and uh, we we see the great benefits of this the, this uh, uh, this 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 cooperation. So 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 very honored. Um, I, I guess uh, at this stage maybe it would be premature for me to speak about the priorities of this. I think we, we still have to internally discuss more. Uh, so so, I, so I, I can just say you know personally just a few few remarks uh, uh, about it. I, I, I think um, we, we one of the subjects we we'll have to do is to tackle is to to, to, to enhance the business to business cooperation. And the government to business cooperation. I think it's a uh, you you very eloquently put it that there is a there is a lot of interest. I think uh, and I, I I don't think I, I know there is a lot of business excitement. And I think the that that we have to elicit this uh, the, the, this area of uh, of cooperation. Um, 
we uh, we noticed the, the the increasing interest by the business community and uh, and uh, and we i think we, we should probably think about the, the business forums uh, to to take um, uh, you know to then the, they are they have been uh, occurring we, we remember the one in bucharest it was very very successful I, we are very much looking forward to the one in vilnius uh, and I think that's a, that's a, we, in this vein we should we should really continue, um, and uh, and with the uh, very in, a lot of interest from the U.S., Japan, Israel, other countries. No, so 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 that's uh, I think the, something important. Um, we have to elicit growth through strength and connectivity, um, uh, and uh, and probably we, we we will have to also reassess a strategy. Uh, to attract uh, investments, no, the, the the a lot of diplomatic work is needed in this regard. Um, we have to uh, engage business in, investment and trade agencies uh, to achieve these goals. Also, um, uh, to, uh, to to try to engage new prospective partners. Um, but uh, so so a lot to be. Um, but okay, these are just my th <laughs> a few random thoughts. So maybe I I I will go back to the first part of your question about the achievements. You know, this uh, I, I think the long this is very long as I see it. But maybe just to point out maybe a, a, a few a fundamental ones. Uh, I think the one is that we have really, mm, despite the very difficult uh, difficult uh, circumstances that we find ourselves with after the. Uh, Russia's invasion on Ukraine uh, after after COVID, we 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 can see that the fundamental uh, suppositions we had behind this project of the three C's initiatives were really correct and timely. Um, at certain point, we engaged in some academic debates in the past. You know, some people were a little bit more enthusiastic; others were more skeptical. But now, looking back uh, from a hindsight, we, we we can really see that we really really we really. Um, Hit it, uh, the, na the how do you call it the, the, <laughs> the hammer and the, and the nail, right? It's uh, um, our region has been developing despite the war uh, in in uh, dynamically. Uh, investors have not been escaping. Uh, the, we we have built uh, above all uh, resilience. Now the, the during COVID, it turned out you know that uh, so sure supply chains were very important and. Uh, and uh, and uh, and look at the energy sector. The, the, I will not enlist uh, all the projects we have built, also that 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 figured within the framework of the three C's initiative, because this has been mentioned already many times, a number of times. But uh, but we 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 did it in a really timely manner, manner right? If I'm not uh, mistaken, I think the first supplies from from uh, uh, Croatia to Slovakia, I mean of the LNG. Uh, reach Slovakia like two weeks before the invasion, uh, so it's uh, it's really uh, where would we have been without those uh, this kind of resilience and uh, energy uh, security, um, and, uh, and, uh, and 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 uh, another fundamental aspect I think is that we have managed to change the mindset, the mindset of our elites, the mindset of uh, of a kind of a self awareness of our region and the sense of agency. Uh, the, the 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 fact that we can now with with so much talk about and we put so much effort into the north south axis of our transportation and and other infrastructure, I mean that's 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 uh, that's uh, I think speaks a lot about the the, the kind of the, the the where we are today and where we were uh, there before. It's also a project that you know as as men as we all remember, it's a uh, it's a uh, it it has. Uh, Attracted a lot of attention and support from the United States in a bipartisan manner. Uh, also, we don't know how the U.S. politic evolves. Uh, we, 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 of course, we will be happy with, I, I, with whatever decisions the U.S. electorate makes. But uh, but it is also a project that, that has a bipartisan support, and I think it's going to be very uh, very important. But, but it's not only the U.S. attention, right? It has been mentioned. Other countries, you know, Israel uh, seeking closer cooperation, Japan, uh, then the 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 the, the, the 
uh, Ukraine joining uh, as the associated partner and uh, Moldova and uh, and uh, looking at the Western Balkans and so on. So it's a uh, a lot of uh, a lot of areas of, of really uh, uh, f f um, uh, gr great uh, great achievements. And I think that another one is this excitement of business. I must say that I feel it like in my in my bones. The, the, in, uh, the, the, that I, when I speak to the to the business community, they they really somehow I think uh, they were not aware of this uh, the the, um, the potential. Uh, um, you know, we were all focused on 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 sometimes on markets outside of our region, but but once the companies uh, saw this potential and they experienced the, how much they can develop the, in terms of uh, reaching the the markets in the region, which are not far away and. Uh, and also seeking suppliers from the region and and how beneficial this cooperation is i think they the, the hence their excitement and i and i'm very happy that there will be a business panel afterwards um, but anyways I, I think i can just talk and talk so i should allow other colleagues to speak minister thank you very much uh, and madam topic so what is your take on the record of uh, the project that has been partially initiated by croatia Yes, I would say that the three C's initiative countries uh, have definitely made a significant progress. Um, if we talk about transport, and this is my domain, I would say, uh, one example I can stress out is now the 10 revision trans European network. Um, our countries uh, have made a significant progress, meaning that we changed the corridors, we extended them, but not just inside the EU, but also beyond the borders of the EU. So now Ukraine, Moldova and Western Balkans will also be included. And for example, for Croatia, uh, we used to be on two corridors. Now Croatia will be on four corridors. Rhine Danube, this is inland corridor. Uh, we used to be on Mediterranean corridor. We stay there, uh, but a new corridor, which is very important for the Three Seas Initiative countries, is Baltic Adriatic Corridor. So we will finally connect now. Um, we have uh, big projects here. Um, Croatian ports are now connected, not just uh, Adriatic port uh, Rijeka, but also Split will be connected towards this Baltic Adriatic Corridor. And uh, we've seen the supply chain crisis. Uh, Croatian ports could serve as alternative logistics for export and import of goods. Um, you mentioned also the LNG terminal in Kirk. Well, Croatia is working on doubling uh, the annual capacity. So this is also very important for our uh, energy sector. Um, there are a lot of projects in the Three Seas Initiative uh, list, which we all um, need to persuade and go further with them. Yes, there will not be enough EU money. We cannot just rely on that. I think we are all aware of that. But jointly, I think we can, we can move forward. Director General, thank you very much. Um, now, and, and thank you for giving an overview of, of, of what is happening with the transport connectivity in your region specifically and, and your priorities and, and the, 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 the European uh, transport networks in the south. Now, coming back north, um, Gitis, um, Rail Baltica, Via Baltica, I think the strategic importance of those two and, specific, and especially the Rail Baltica cannot be, uh, really cannot be um, underestimated. Um, um, it will, I think, not only help the, uh, you know, to increase the, uh, the, the, the trade, uh, connect our region uh, to, 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 to the southern part and, and to Western Europe, increase trade, but also take off some, um, some uh, uh, I mean, reduce dependence on the road network in particular uh, and and also will contribute to the uh, uh, to the green objectives uh, that are now uh, all, all over uh, in in europe so what is the current state of play with the with the with the rail baltica uh, can you can you share with the audience well definitely um but before i do maybe i just like to share a thought uh, via baltica rail baltica i i i you know, I often um, receive a question, you know, should we actually build both? And uh, my answer is, you know, what a strange question, you know. <laughs> we should have built both, like, 
of them 10 years ago. And that's the biggest problem that we have today. So uh, via Baltica, Rio Baltica. Another side thought uh, that I have is, I remember uh, the, the ambassador mentioned via Carpatia, and this is a very important initiative as well. But when you think about Via Carpatia, Via Carpatia links Klaipeda to, north, to the south, towards the uh, southern parts uh, of Europe. But I think the current status necessitates that we also have rail Carpatia, not only Via Carpatia, because Via Carpatia is a road transport project. And what we have, we have Rail Baltica, which is also very important. Uh, but Rail Baltica, you know, initially when we had started Rail Baltica together with the Polish colleagues and friends, it was basically this part of the uh, North Sea Baltic Transport Corridor, which is basically going to uh, Western Europe. And now we, uh, we had already, uh, to get together with the TNT uh, revision, uh, changed the perspective and we made Poland and Warsaw in particular as the nexus, the node of the whole the corridors in the region. So basically, Rail Baltica is now connecting with other corridors in Warsaw, and then going south and towards Ukraine and towards Croatia. This is the key achievement that we had already achieved. On the works ongoing, um, we, we are very happy that we have coordinated with the Polish colleagues a lot, and we have, uh, um, you know, a very clear timings and, and, and deadlines for both of us. So in terms of Via Baltica, we will have the highway established between Kaunas and Warsaw, you know, all the way by the um, by next year. So that's the achievement that's already, you know, basically we can conclude that we have it, but you know, it's the, the, you know in terms of construction, it's a very short time period. So next year, uh, Via Baltica will be completed, but you know, when I say completed, it's it's not really completed because it's Kaunas, for sure. Okay. What what we continue, what we intend to do, we intend to continue north from Kaunas towards Latvia and Estonia, and that's probably also one of the issues that you had asked uh, the the you know the panelists here. You know, so what's the future for three uh, three three C's initiative? What can we do to get in in the in the longer term? And we have a lot of projects that will contribute to the, you know, to the three C's in the future. Because continuing with Via Baltica from Kaunas towards Tallinn as a highway, according to the 10 T parameters, will be very, very costly, but it's also very, very much necessary. On Rail Baltica, well, although we have the 10 T regulation that basically says, well, that's a requirement, we have to complete it by 2030, which we will do. We also had a, a a higher ambition together with the Polish colleagues to have the first international link between between Lithuania and Poland already in operation by 2028. So uh, in order to achieve that, we are already constructing uh, the main line of, uh, of Rail Baltica. And uh, we intend, to, if we, we, we will have enough money available, to uh, complete, uh, to, to continue with the construction. Our priority, as we are now uh, planning the Rail Baltica, is that we will start prioritizing construction between Kaunas and Polish border. It, it, that section is the key priority for us. And, you know, in order to complete uh, and, and basically launch the operations by 2028. So that's the status, and we are uh, very happy that we have strong cooperation with Poland on that. Thank you, Gitis. And uh, this connects me to my next question to Minister Neverovich. Um, Lithuania hosted the NATO summit, as it can be said, has been said by the ambassador. Now we're hosting the 3, 3, 3SI summit. Two different, different worlds, but there are some elements that you will find in both of these. The military mobility. Real Baltica military mobility also very much connected. So, Minister, do you think that we have prioritized the military mobility enough within the three three SI specifically, and uh, and and what can be done really to to put put this uh, on a on a slightly higher level and on on a higher gear within the three C's initiative? 
Thank you, Gilminas, for this question. Before I uh, comment on military mobility, let me uh, just address uh, Gita's uh, um, you know, condition. Uh, he mentioned that if we have the financing, so uh, just a few weeks ago, we, uh, President of Lithuania had a meeting uh, with representatives of the uh, Ministry of Transportation, Railways, uh, uh, Businesses, uh, and a newly created uh, uh, um, uh, so-called National Investment Fund, you could call it, in Vega. So something uh, which uh, rem resembles Polish uh, Bank Gospodarstwa Krajowego, so, that, so, so the National Development Institution. This is the direction uh, the President was advocating uh, since the beginning of, of his term, and finally now this institution is created. So the result of this discussion was that uh, there is no clause if anymore. Invega has obliged itself to, to align all the formal documents which, uh, which, which might not uh, uh, allow them for this uh, to do right now, but uh, they, they obliged that they will work on, on, uh, on uh, amending the documents and helping railways to do project finance for Rail Baltica. So not only uh, uh, Kaunas uh, border of Poland, but Vilnius Kaunas border of Poland as soon as possible. Uh, actually, the, the statistics issue mentions 100,000 people going. It's uh, it's the best example of uh, how demand is there. You just need to build infrastructure, and it's obviously that it uh, it's directly relates also to military mobility. They need to have the operational uh, railway uh, all the way, uh, and uh, our analysis shows that uh, the social economic uh, benefit is is huge for this project and uh, we should not be waiting for European financing. Rail Baltica is uh, the only one project mentioned directly in uh, uh, multi-annual financial framework decisions of 2020. So it's 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 understandable that it's a priority project for European Union. It, the financing will come. So we should not wait for for this financing. We should find the ways to 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 organize bridge financing, uh, uh, with the, all the development institutions being Lithuanian or 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 BGK or whatever other uh, financial institutions might be willing to help us to to build up uh, much earlier than than otherwise uh, would be possible uh, with the European finances. So coming back to military mobility, I think there is uh, mm, uh, not enough satisfaction in this uh, topic in our region, uh, to put it diplomatically. Uh, and the why? Uh, during the same uh, MFF negotiations, uh, European Commission solved uh, so-called uh, deadlock in uh, negotiations with Frugals, uh, at that time by slashing military mobility and giving it to, to other goals of other regions uh, uh, to the detriment of this topic. Uh, of course, when the war has started, uh, Lithuania uh, uh, formalized the proposal that during the uh, midterm review of MFF, this topic should be uh, uh, should come back to the discussions and we expect the Commission to put forward the proposal, how they will increase the financing for military mobility. Unfortunately, it did not happen. So if you ask uh, my opinion, what, uh, what could be done is, is uh, we should work uh, harder. So obviously our region did not uh, work hard enough to put uh, this uh, topic uh, in a clear way as a priority of our region. So, uh, so uh, let's, let's have a lesson from, from this uh, point and also homework maybe for three season initiative because obviously uh, in the context of uh, war going on uh, right here, military mobility is very important and adequate financing of the European Union for this project is, is uh, necessary. Thank you, Minister. Indeed, let's work, let's work harder uh, and let's work together. I think uh, the Three Seas Initiative as a group, 13 EU member states, it's uh, almost half of the, of the whole you know, EU uh, composition. So I think it can be a powerful lobby uh, gr group in Brussels. And I think from the Lithuanian perspective, this, uh, this I mean, we, we uh, consider this uh, synergy between EU sectorial policies and the Treaties Initiative 
uh, quite an important priority and, and, and we'll be making a strong emphasis on this particular point uh, du during the, uh, the upcoming summit. Um, but now, uh, turning back to Minister Gerwell, um, a uh, the question of financing has been raised many times by, 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 by many of us. Uh, you have a lot of um, experience from outside Europe. You, you were uh, you know, a career diplomat, former ambassador to, to Vietnam, also under secretary for, for economic uh, diplomacy. Uh, so uh, how, from your perspective, we can um, better attract the, uh, the, the foreign capital to the, to the three SI projects? This is a, a, a perpetual question. You know, I, I was also ambassador in Japan, and I, I remember and how we were trying to persuade them to join the 3SI, 3SI investment fund. Uh, it takes a lot of time, uh, it's not easy, but, but still I think there is a lot of potential outside of Europe for as far as the, the funding is concerned and how to instrumentalize that funding, how to bring it in our, in our region. Minister. Thank you very much. Uh, before I just answer this question, just extremely briefly, because two, two, two subjects were mentioned, so just uh, one minute answer the there was a question about the transport corridors and i just wanted to, to draw your attention to the fact because maybe some of you have missed it but the three c's initiative uh, efforts the, the the resilience we have built here we have been building here has become so attractive i think uh, as an example even as a model around the world that uh, we we sponsored in the united nations uh, resolution uh, it was called the building global resilience and promoting sustainable development through regional and interregional infrastructure connectivity. It was very, you know, a global support for this resolution. Very, very um, st strong support it passed. And and but we sh it should not escape us in this discussion that we actually it was the three C's ex experience that was uh, the, the, at the time of turbulence, right? Of the, the, that that proved so so worthy that 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 the United Nations has adopted it. Then the second uh, brief remark regarding military mobility, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's so important, I think. And uh, we, we uh, you know, the, because we think about operations and the logistics, right? What if something happens and how do you transport uh, the, 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 the supplies? But, but this is obvious, but you know, there is so much more. It's a, it's a question of deterrence, because if we have a functioning logistics, it, it deters invasion. Then, uh, then there is a question of economic resilience. Once you have a war, if uh, if your the railway lines are blocked by military military you know uh, efforts or and your transportation routes, then your uh, economy gets stuck. And and as we can see, you know, long term resilience is important. So it's a uh, so many aspects of this military mobility. But okay, that, that's just short uh, side remarks. Then going back to the question. Uh, you know, I, uh, I, 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 as we all know, there is a, there's no shortage of capital around the world. No, the, 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 the large-scale investors are really looking for where to put, uh, anchor their money uh, uh, and, and, and have a good earning. And, uh, and in this sense, I think it's, uh, it's just, a, it's a kind of. A, uh, uh, we, we have not been su sufficiently successful yet, but I think we are in the process of, of building those, those uh, infrastructure connections and those three C's priority projects are not uh, bankable. They are, they are not commercial projects, you know, the, even though there is uh, so much success of this uh, connection to all the way to Krakow, as you say, and glad to, to hear about it. And, and I think that the, the, they are definitely there's a, so much benefit to the society, to the economy overall, but, uh, but, but sometimes those whole projects, they require financing from the national budgets, from, uh, from some uh, leveraging the EU funds, then, then also the loans of the international financial institutions like EBRD, EBI, and so on. And, uh, but, uh, but we, perhaps one of the ways we, we could think about it is also to not only to have a list of three C's priority projects, but maybe some kind of sub list of priority projects. Those elements that are that are bankable, that are, that can, you know, uh, be treated in a commercial way. And and for instance, you know, in the, uh, uh, the digital field, for instance, that's that's probably e easier. But uh, um, but the. Uh, 
I, I already mentioned the 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 business excitement, and I think that oftentimes it's the lack of really the really the lack of information and knowing each other that is a major obstacle uh, in uh, eliciting growth here in in East Central Europe. And in this sense, uh, I think that uh, the trade fairs and uh, where of the, the the region where the companies can get to know each other as suppliers, as potential buyers, and so on. I think it's invaluable. The, we can already see that the the, the experiences of of uh, here have been uh, auspicious. Um, uh, but but again, and that this is I, I will uh, maybe because I, I I I notice I have a tendency to talk too long, so I will not get into some list of of things. But but the overall, re really, I, I go back to my point that I made in the beginning, looking. Uh, you know, you, you you are a major investor, and where are you going to invest? It's not so evident because sometimes the political climate is very difficult. So oftentimes, the corruption, right? The, there is so so many challenges in, in in different regions around the world, and there is only some areas in in the world where where you re it's really safe to put your capital. And I and and uh, and here we have a we do have a shortage of this infrastructural connections, and I think this is real. If we if we get rid of it, with all the other regulatory aspects that we have, very good overall, right? And within the framework of the European Union, I think we are going to be the the champion, and uh, and and we'll continue to attract investors like we have attracted, for instance, the major Google center in in Warsaw or uh, or Intel is uh, moving in, right? They they wouldn't move in in if this was not a safe fascinating region and 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 as not a single country here is large enough so all together we are large enough for this major investors as a, as a region but i think we are just not big enough as, as as countries oftentimes for this large investment so we should we should i'm very glad that we have this self-awareness that we are strong as a, as a as a region within the european union Thank you, Minister. Thank you also for your inspiration. I would also add that what we need for global investors is to offer them a vehicle. We need to create some, some vehicle, some instrument. We had a fund, now we are talking about some successor instruments. So this is what is going to be discussed in Vilnius and we hope for, for, uh, for a positive outcome. The time is really flying. I still had uh, so many questions and now I'm, I'll be obliged to combine a little bit. And I, I think it would be amiss if we don't tackle the issue of transport innovation. Looking at our title, you know, this is something that, 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 that we need to answer at least in, in, in some broader, broader sense. So, um, Director General, you are a strategic planner in your ministry. So what is your take on transport innovation uh, ecosystem in, in, in our region? And uh, maybe together with the minister. <laughs> uh, so can, can really the region become a trendsetter, not only a consumer of the you know, innovation solutions, various innovation solutions of the 21st century, century, but also offer some, 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 uh, some, some, some solutions, uh, indigenous solutions. But maybe first, Director General, starting from you. Thank you. Uh, yes, of course, we we should work jointly in the region, uh, not uh, just consume the innovative um, digital solutions, uh, but not just digital, also green uh, transition. Um, Croatia is uh, trying now mostly through EU funds but also private capital and private companies and R&D projects even uh, in transport but in all modes of, of transport. So even in maritime transport uh, we need to change perspective. In railway uh, transport we need to change perspective because for example Croatian railways are not uh, through the whole lines electrified. So we are now moving to electric trains or hydrogen. Uh, public transport, of course, no more diesel. Um, inland transport also. So all modes of transport, we are trying to, to find innovative solutions. Also 5G corridors, um, we are preparing for that. We are preparing a tender uh, for that through the railway corridor, but we will surely, I hope, soon get there. Thank you very much. Minister, what is your take on, on those issues? Yes, thank you. So innovations uh, and research and development is a very expensive field. And obviously, looking at statistics, especially in Lithuania, uh, we can say that it's a really dear state. And uh, 
there is no much perspective to change that immediately. Um, probably there is uh, some rational reasons for that, uh, uh, including uh, the policies of the government, which may be not enough uh, emphasis on that and support for, for to, to business needs in that area. But I think the low hanging fruit here is uh, actually to understand what our needs are. And it doesn't mean that uh, we should copy paste the, the priorities for innovations and, uh, and development uh, areas of uh, proposed in Brussels. Our region has a very specific situation and very uh, important economic, social, ge geographical uh, motivations to have a very specific approach to to challenges in transportation, in energy. And uh, first thing, first important thing is to understand those specific needs. Uh, example might be energy sector and uh, moving away from uh, from natural gas to biomass. So. Uh, that was counterintuitive at some point, and it looked like going back to to uh, to resources which uh, were al already finished, you know, using uh, uh, going for biomass. But uh, actually, that was a good decision because we reduced uh, very dramatically the cost for our societies. We used our local resources. We we kept the money inside our uh, ecosystem. So it, it, was, it was all uh, winning uh, uh, arguments. So the same for transportation, you know, it's for me, uh, looks like we should not be trying to outcompete China in producing, uh, uh, you know, electric cars and electric buses. But what we should do is try to tailor our demand and our uh, policy towards, uh, I don't know, buying uh, uh, transportation for municipalities, uh, uh, decarbonizing the transport of what is available locally. So not uh, just go for the cheapest uh, solution where, you know, China is, is mostly dumping uh, this on, on Europe and there will be more of that. And is it smart on our side just to not to see what was going on? I don't think so. We should we should think of ways of using the potential of, uh, for example, Dancer Bus, uh, Mr. Noyek, as I saw, is, is here, Altas, uh, Elinta, uh, just a few uh, companies in Lithuania which are working in, in these directions, and they need uh, assistance, not not uh, the, 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 even the obvious one, you know, like uh, uh, compensation of some uh, investment in uh, uh, R&D, but also structuring, for example, uh, some kind of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, priority for, for, for buying uh, uh, buses, for, 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 for arranging this demand for them to, to, to have the uh, possibility to build locally. So I, I would say that this, this, uh, this is a much uh, uh, wiser perspective to focus on uh, what is possible and obviously also at the same time working on, on uh, R and D, uh, true R and D, uh, in cooperation uh, with uh, European partners, uh, tapping into uh, the funds of European Union, which we are not using enough. Uh, we are paying more to innovations funds uh, to finance Western Europe than using it ourselves here. So it's not right. <laughs> Thank you, Minister. Great answer. Looking at the watch, I'm, I realize that I'm a pretty bad watch keeper, but. I, <laughs> I, we still have to. You still have to stay with with us for 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 a couple of minutes because there are two very important uh, issues that I that I need to to to, to raise. Uh, one of them, of course, Ukraine. I mean, uh, the Three Seas Initiative has Ukraine in its DNA by geography, by historic affinity with that country. So, what can be done? better and more to shore up support for Ukraine. And there is, uh, and, uh, there is one answer already, which I would like uh, Gitis to expand on, and that is the International Transport Forum and the high-level conference on Ukraine that is going to take place actually as a back-to-back -back event with the uh, TRIASI summit here in Vilnius. So Gitis, can you say, uh, can you tell us uh, in a few words on, on what is on the agenda on ITF, of ITF and again, how ITF, but also we as a collective, you know, uh, partners of Ukraine, also through C3C's initiative, can we, how can we uh, assist Ukraine in its difficult time? Well, um, a, you know, just, you know, very, very well raised question. Uh, that's, um, 
you know, Lithuania holds the presidency of the ITF and we will be in the presidency seat uh, until this May. And I can already tell you that uh, we are being praised among the ITF countries uh, that, you know, we made a big stir and change as, as far as the Ukraine is concerned. So I just came back from a meeting last week in Paris where the ITF headquarters are. Um, and we had a second meeting, uh, separate to uh, the usual ITF meeting, but we had a separate meeting, a second meeting of the so-called uh, CIG for you. This is the Common Interest Group for Ukraine that we had established as a presidency together with uh, some um, ITF uh, members and together with Canada, Sweden, and of course Ukraine. So this group, the idea is to basically focus and coordinate all the support provided to Ukraine in terms of transport, modernization, reconstruction, and new corridor developments. Why am I mentioning this group? And there are several reasons for that. First of all, we, the ITF, through the, the CAG for your group, can provide global support. I mentioned the, the co-chairs, the, 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 the countries that established the group we have Canada on board. We have a lot of interest from Japan again. So it's not only you know regional issue, it's a global challenge that we want to steer all the support from those countries, you know, and they're willing to pledge. And that's just my second point. We already received a lot of pledges in Paris back last week. I will not mention those countries because they, they didn't want to make it public yet. But we will have a lot of pledges in support of Ukraine. There will be countries basically uh, giving up money to transport development in Ukraine and towards Ukraine. And the, the other element is that not only countries, but also international organizations are on board. We have all the European Commission on board together with the uh, uh, other global partners. And they will be all meeting here, also the bank, banking institutions and the banks, international banks, they will be all meeting here, yes, in Trakai on 10th of April. And uh, our minister, Minister Squadis, will be uh, presiding the meetings. And I invite you all and invite also not only participate, but uh, you know, uh, follow as well if you can't be there physically. Thank you. Thank you, Gitis, and, and from my side, I can also uh, say that also within the three C's uh, business forum, there will be a lot of attention to Ukraine. There will be a separate dedicated panel to Ukraine, uh, and uh, we will try all together to, 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 to make sure that we as a platform is also, can also be useful for, for, for the reconstruction of, of Ukraine that is fighting the war, fighting for us, fighting for, for Europe. But uh, yeah, looking at my watch again, I think I will go to the very, uh, short and, 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 and telegraphic summary of, 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 of our panel. Um, unless maybe there is a, I should have asked the audience, unless there is some, some burning question from, from, from somebody of you. Uh, Romas, yes, go ahead, Romas. Okay, hello, since we've been offered an opportunity to ask question, I will not lose this opportunity. My name is Roma Shvadas. I'm from Lithuanian Railway Central Baltic uh, uh, project company. I'm member of the board and member of uh, supervisory board and uh, uh, thank you for the discussion and uh, looking forward to the to the summit I would like to raise uh, the, uh, the one topic for the attention of the politicians of uh, this uh, forum because when we look at the map uh, for the railways it is indeed a challenging uh, period uh, imagine especially in Lithuania because of war basically there is no east west direction and now it is south north direction so at the same time this direction is multi country multi standard because we have different standards of uh, um, um, uh, railways uh, and uh, of course it is <clears throat> multi-mode because we need to move forward about it was we've discussed here about innovation and climate change so um, 
Lithuanian railways are developing uh, a semi-trailer uh, business, which is very competitive. Uh, and a big competition is here uh, to move uh, trucks, other words, to put trucks on on um, on 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 wagons, uh, basically, and thus to be more uh, environmentally friendly. And this is, you know, uh, container transportation, semi-trailer transportation is more and more popular, though it is very investment intensive. And to compete there, to, to make steps, because we need to invest in uh, new terminals, we need to invest in new infrastructure, is very difficult. So my question is the following, that uh, Western European countries, the legislators, they approve such a legislation which promotes uh, a development of alternative to truck. If we have an objective to move cargo from truck to railways to be more green, to be more innovative, uh, okay, so there is a certain legislation. So in Western European countries, what we hear from businesses in Poland, also in Lithuania, this legislation is going faster and thus they move faster towards this transport mode and they are becoming more competitive than we. We need to compete, Lithuania, Poland, uh, going to West, and unfortunately, because our legislation with regard to environment is lacking behind, we are losing this competitive. So my um, advice or my wish would be for the political leaders of a free season uh, initiative to look at the legislation and to see that a level playing field uh, would guarantee in order to move uh, uh, this uh, direction of development of multimodal uh, transport and to not to lose uh, competition and competitiveness in this field. And this is about approving uh, laws which would promote to move cargo from trucks to railways. Thank you. Sir, thank you, Romas. Uh, uh, we take good note of your advice. Uh, very uh, competent advice, uh, and I think it will be uh, on the agenda for for business summit, uh, for business forum, and and, and for business summit. Uh, unless uh, somebody wants to to comment, I think uh, again it also proves to what extent uh, our national uh, uh, railway company is already very much into things, and 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 also brings in this question brings in the the aspect of. E, of the three C's initiative acting as a group, as a platform within the EU, on EU legislation as well. So uh, very important uh, uh, aspects raised. But again, I don't want to ruin our event and I know that the coffee is waiting and I, I see colleagues from the Polish Empire looking at, at me and, and making this pressure. So my very short summary uh, to before we, 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 we break for coffee, no no, prior, no, no prioritization between east and west, no, uh, east west versus north and south. This is, this is, I think, uh, I think, uh, very clear. Um, um, transport uh, as a inflexible sector is something that that can be proven wrong if we have a, a common will. Um, uh, this geographic paradox that uh, you know here in the region we are talking north south, but actually. In terms of global connections, we are very much still looking uh, to east, east, uh, east, west global global connections. The importance of business B two B and B two G also uh, within the three C's initiative, and important to develop uh, importance of developing those uh, those those instruments within the initiative. Uh, the TNT revision and you know inclusion of corridors uh, across the board in the three SI, both in the south. Uh, our Croatian colleague mentioned all the developments there, but also here in the north. Um, uh, yeah, and um, military mobility, uh, a, a crucial topic that, that needs to be, to be, to be, to be developed. De developed. Uh, the innovation, lower hanging fruit, in, uh, like uh, understanding the importance of, of, of this issue and also uh, emphasizing the local solutions, local uh, solutions that, that would be better tailored to 
to, to our connectivity here in, here in the region. Those are only a few elements that I picked up. There are many. All of us were making notes, I hope, and, and uh, from, from this discussion. I would like to thank uh, all the panelists for this uh, take on, on transport connectivity in the three seas region. We'll be continuing with our event uh, and bringing in some more private experience also in, in, the, in, in the second panel, which and that's why the question that has been raised, I think it will be also a good bridge to, 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 the, to the second panel. So, so thank you once again. Six minutes left for the, for, for the coffee. <laughs> Uh, I, I can hopefully we can uh, uh, go a little further. So so once again, thank you very much, and 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 um, see you see you see you after the coffee break back in the room.
Начинаме. So it is a big honor to be there, especially after first panel discussion, what is a perfect bridge was to our uh, I would like I want to say that uh, we are practicing practice practicals who are doing this kind of uh, business in uh, in our world so what I would like to ask my panelists let's do it uh, like to understand how we can help uh, to develop business partnership in this three C's uh, regions. Uh, of course, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Jurgis Adamavičius. Uh, I am more than 20 years in business. Most part of this time I spent in logistics. Uh, last three years I am doing a lot with digitalization, with uh, efficiency in logistics. So it will be a big pleasure to discuss more what we can do. Uh, in developing our partnership between free seas uh, region countries and businesses uh, in, in the same time. So uh, we have big group of uh, panelists and of course we will start with, uh, I will try to keep it digital, I will not print it out but uh, I just, when I was preparing to this panel discussion I visited your web pages and uh, found out that uh, LTG Infra is uh, writing that the mission is to connect uh, people and businesses uh, to build better world. So I would like to start from uh, LTG Infra, of course, uh, uh, with their opinion how we can help to develop this better world in free seas region of course for people first of all after that for businesses and maybe for our companies too sure so i will start this discussion in that case first of all thank you for the embassy and i am feeling pretty much thrilled and excited being in front of such a respectful audience but let's hope that this thrill and excitement only will benefit for the discussion not vice versa yes infrastructure we're really trying to connect businesses and people, let's say so. Uh, first of all, we see railways and we perceive railways as the backbone of the transpo transportation system. And there is still much to do to achieve it. Nevertheless, so some projects we already mentioned, like Rail Baltica, which is very important in the sense of the cargo traffic and passenger traffic, connecting the main uh, western cities with the Baltic region. I'm talking about uh, Warsaw, uh, Krakow, and furthermore to the west. Uh, this project, as already mentioned, we are striving to have it already ready by the 2030. And that will be a high-speed line connecting those cities for the passengers with a speed of 250 kilometers per hour. So that will be quite a significant change. Talking about the corridor itself, I know that most of the countries, or maybe even all the countries, do have already plans and trying to achieve the same results by having a high-speed line uh, connecting all the countries. Um, nevertheless, already by now, infrastructure and uh, group members of LTG already did certain steps to connect con uh, cities. Uh, we have, as already mentioned, the traffic, the passenger traffic from Konas to Warsaw and Krakow, which is quite popular. And also another one from Vilnius to Riga, which was launched uh, this winter, which is also this, at the same level of popularity. So as, I, as, as it was said before, people are looking for that. Yes, uh, tra cargo traffic. Again, we are trying to be a le leaders, not only from the infrastructure uh, point of view, but also from the cargo group in the region. Cargo already started certain um, traffic of the goods from Lithuania to Estonia. So that's quite a good, uh, a good sign. Also uh, strengthening and building up intermodal traffic through uh, the corridor up 
again to the all the Baltic countries. And that is very important again for infrastructure. Infrastructure must be developed, infrastructure must be convenient, infrastructure must be controlled, and infrastructure must be planned. And this is what infrastructure manager is trying to achieve is and doing right now. I hope I answered the question. Thank you, Tommy. Uh, I would like, uh, first of all, to ask uh, our panel uh, attendees to introduce yourself because I, I introduced myself, so maybe people are interested of you, so they understood that, Thomas, you yeah. are from LTG. I'm Inter from LTG and I'm basically the director of the traffic management in LTG. Recently, my position was changed to the director of the services. So basically, now I'll be responsible not only for the traffic management and et cetera development, but also for the intermodels and any other possible services which is being provided by the infrastructure. Thank you, Tommy. Uh, you mentioned uh, that uh, if you would like to manage the traffic, you, of course, should have a trains and, of course, you have uh, uh, the train should have uh, rails where, to, where to, to go. So we have Jan uh, in, in our panel discussion, which is a leading uh, company in Poland who is producing all parts. Of course, you have big issues at the moment. Uh, I, I think uh, all the railways uh, have faced that we used all uh, east uh, parts and, of course, trains. Uh, Panyan, uh, tell us how you are cooperating now with our uh, free seas countries, with uh, rail infrastructures. Are you facing some issues with that or they are happy that you are leading producer in, in these areas? Thank you very much once again for the invitation. My name is Jan Bonczyk. I'm Sales Director of International uh, Railways Market. Uh, exactly, uh, this is very important region for us. Research initiative we joined years ago uh, because uh, strategical point of view of Polish manufacturers to be in the neighbors countries. Uh, of course, we are the leader of the region in Poland. As we as we as we look at the map here, Poland is is big enough for us. But uh, normally, we, you have to know that we. Uh, we are very open for the neighbors country and we are very, very lucky, more than, more than, more than lucky uh, that we were invited uh, to these initiatives and we are participating in all the events uh, which were held uh, in Bucharest, in Sofia, because this region is very important for the PES export, for the uh, product. We deliver to this country like Bulgaria uh, 68 trams, uh, now we are involved with a huge contract in Romania for 91 trains. Uh, and of course, we are very strong in Czech Republic, neighbors country of Poland, in Lithuania, here in, in our uh, uh, friendly countries. And we expected to deliver the first train to the Tallinn uh, this year. So the map is very important for me, especially for me, because I'm an international manager and this country are very familiar to me. Uh, for the point of view, of the strategical point of view, so uh, we are very, very lucky that we are here and we expected that the Rail Baltica, Via Carpatia, uh, will be not a slogan, will be concrete on, or on, on, on the next uh, few years uh, project, which will be uh, ready to deliver our trains. Public transportation is not ju not just trains, trams, and of course it, it's uh, buses uh, at the same time too. Now we have uh, big issues uh, which uh, we are facing with uh, energy and of course uh, green uh, green policy. So we have two uh, companies, but I would like to start from Alvidas because I checked their website too, so they have very good mission. So, Olvidas, could you introduce your mission and uh, how how is going and what what kind of issues are you facing in, in this this area? Thank you, Jurgis. Uh, Olvidas Noyakas, uh, the founder uh, of the uh, dancer group uh, team, um, and. Um, when we started uh, our transition from wind energy, where most of our team uh, were uh, uh, really pioneers in Lithuania, uh, really we employed the laws of uh, physics uh, 
to create our engineering solutions. Uh, to understand the difference, the main difference between uh, uh, the conventional buses and then uh, electric buses. It was 12 years ago. So we didn't have any uh, good uh, examples in the world from San Francisco, Silicon Valley to Tokyo. Uh, and what we understood uh, that the lightness uh, is the way um, to reach our targets. Uh, and why it is? Because, you know, in thermodynamics in physics, the law says that uh, the, in uh, combustion uh, engines, the heat is uh, waste. In electric uh, engines and powertrains, we don't have this. Uh, and, uh, you know, since the beginning of last century, 100 years, uh, uh, all transportation were based on that uh, this waste, uh, heat, must be thrown out. Uh, and, uh, and all uh, engineering solutions were based on that. So to change this dramatically, uh, we understood that uh, uh, in our... Uh, uh, geographical location where we have winters and uh, sometimes colder that we need uh, to carry the passengers in in warm warm buses so for this we need the the power power the battery battery has the volume uh, and density but uh, I mean uh, and then uh, then really uh, we uh, we got the solution uh, to change uh, Technology and and move from from standard steel uh, structure to the to the composite, where we really uh, was the the game changer in wind energy, where other blades were were created uh, 25 years or 30 years ago. Uh, also the uh, the shipping uh, for 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 the uh, you know small boats and 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 kayaks as well. Uh, this is what was great transition, you know, to, to, and, and we use the same materials. So that our, our target was set uh, uh, 12 years ago to create the, the bus who waits with hundreds of passengers, the same as conventional bus weighs empty. So that was uh, target. And we reached this. So we have now the bus was 30 to 40 percent less uh, weight than than the than the average buses and we uh, so we then can complete the range fully complete the range of of daily of daily uh, uh, ride you know 20 250 uh, 30 kilometers per day uh, and uh, uh, also uh, for the scaling of production it's much e easier, not not so dependent to, to the capex, to expand the production. So that's uh, and also uh, uh, Jurgis didn't ask me about uh, about the uh, uh, mob dancer mobility system, which we invented actually, and uh, we're st still going to, uh, uh, and still producing buses for 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 this. Uh, uh, for for Clyde, the city, uh, where uh, the uh, we we are selling not the buses really, but we we say we are selling uh, the kilometers for Clyde, the city, uh, and uh, so I mean uh, uh, technology is so uh, uh, so smart and difficult to understand the all the systems electronics for for the operators. Then uh, we need really to to have uh, to take care of this. The producer, uh, is this the same happened in in the wind energy 30 years ago when producers uh, became, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, or, or made the guarantees for 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 this for the buyers uh, and the availability. So that that this business moved a lot. So they they were constructed the same. Uh, I mean, uh, the financing uh, goes from outside. Uh, the proven technology comes from 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 us, 
uh, it should be very reliable and after sales uh, really uh, not so expensive in, in long perspective, like 10 years. Uh, and also electricity supply with infrastructure together. So, but this is brand new uh, model. Uh, we didn't find any in, in, in the world. Uh, some uh, uh, more or less uh, the same. We found a couple projects in Spain and, and in, in France, but we will see. Thank you. A uh, representative from Lithuanian Railways was talking about that it, it could be great opportunity to talk about uh, uh, laws, uh, government, uh, political uh, solutions and some changes would could be initiated during the, uh, the 3C summit. Uh, should we think about the public transportation, uh, something that way? Definitely, yes. I, th I think this, this should be the, the, main, the, the main subject to, to, to talk, because what we have now, uh, existing law in Lithuania, uh, it's, it's not confirmed really with red free, even now, with new targets. In, in red free, we have new target by 30, uh, 2030 to reach 29% of, renew of renewable. And in our law, it's written just 14. So this, this, this thing, it's, it's real, really crucial. Uh, also, uh, what's regarding the Lithuanian example, uh, then um, the taxes, uh, or we can say penalties, uh, on, on the pollution is so low that, uh, that people, they simply don't want to switch. We need to regulate this as well. As well, the, the public financing for, for the infrastructure is not defined clearly in, in this law. Uh, also, the, uh, 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 the social find for funding for, for, the, for new technologies, for inventions, because without inventions, we, we, we cannot move forward. We just stuck. Sometimes we can see that we stuck in, in 19th century with, with engineering solutions. Let's keep it a little bit in the market. After that, we will just discuss about the money. We have representatives, so we, we, can, we can discuss more about, uh, about fundings. Uh, like I, I told at the beginning, so we are lucky that uh, we have practicals there. So uh, we have Martin from, from company, uh, uh, which is leading company in pro production public transport. Uh, like green too, like I understand, and you uh, have great experience and you can share with us uh, in three seas uh, regions, of course, and maybe in all world. Yes, um, my name is Martin Fiedler and I'm, I have the honor to represent um, RP e-vehicles, uh, our company manufacture uh, zero emission buses, uh, zero emission uh, that is uh, buses with uh, hydrogen and electric drive. Um, our products are, uh, are our concept in 100%. Uh, percent. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the um, invitation. Changes uh, in transport, especially in um, public transport, uh, are integral part of uh, Mm, the green transformation, uh, especially uh, due to big amount of uh, harmful uh, elements of exhaust gases and uh, noise emitted by uh, vehicles, uh, we knew that that um, few years ago. So we created a very innovative bus. Uh, the first one was Pila. Mm, with electric drive, it uh, was created about six years ago. And at that time, it was the most innovative uh, electric bus in the world, um, especially thanks to um, two uh, solutions. The first one is um, uh, our, our batteries under the floor. It, it was first in the world. Thanks to that, uh, the point of gravity of the bus is very low, so uh, a vehicle is very stable on the on the road. And uh, besides, uh, 
the construction is very light. The total weight of construction is uh, um, wider than um, our concurrents. Um, our competitors uh, made some transition um, from traditional uh, diesel buses. Uh, so the batteries uh, are on the roof. Uh, in our case, uh, it's an absolutely new solution. Uh, the second thing which was um, new in the market was onboard charger. And it makes that um, the bus is uh, complete. Uh, you don't need a special big charger. Uh, you, you need only a three-phase socket, electrical socket, and, and that's all. Mm, and you can use uh, the bus. All the solutions was obviously copied by our competitors, especially from China. <laughs> uh, but uh, we were first. Mm, we are aware that um, three seas uh, countries Mm, have, um, it, it's a region where our ideal condition to, to, to rapid introduction of zero emission transport, public transport, because uh, all these countries are in the European Union uh, and we've got um, ready legislation, it, it's very important. Uh, we've got also um, the final, uh, final subsidies and um, European Union has a very uh, significant final finance resources for the um, subsidies, uh, so uh, we can uh, we can do. Yeah. Um, besides, um, we can be as a Poland. We can be uh, an example for other countries, and we want to be an example. Uh, and uh, to share our um, mm, 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 um, solutions. Um, for example, city like Zielona Góra, uh, it's about 150,000 uh, people, uh, citizens, um, has now an entire city fleet, entire bus fleet, uh, electric. Uh, but it, it's special made on the border with Germany that Germans can see. Maybe it's <laughs> maybe it's the reason, but they are very active uh, in um, taking uh, funds and subsidies. This is yes, this is the uh, the secret. Um, they have also very very complex um, infrastructure. Uh, for charging, a special supercharger for buses all over the city, the big photovoltaic farm to produce electric, green uh, electric current dedicated for buses. Um, so we can share it, we can spread it um, around the Europe. And we have also um, many, many uh, zero emission buses uh, manufacturers in Poland. So we are very open for uh, cooperation. We are very open uh, to sell our products um, in the mm, markets of uh, Three Seas region. Uh, how do you see uh, in the first panel we, we heard about the dumping from Chinese uh, uh, manufacturers. Uh, how you are competing with them? Well, Chinese competitors are our main uh, obstacle and uh, we try to uh, not fight but uh, compete with them uh, but it's very uh, very um, difficult first of all because they have a very good price very low prices uh, of their um, buses in Poland, uh, in Polish public procurement law, um, the main factor 
in, um, in, in, in the tenders uh, is a price. So uh, we uh, should very fast um, decrease our costs, our total cost, product, especially production uh, costs. Uh, we have to be very efficient uh, and uh, to try to keep the high uh, quality. The problem with uh, Chinese uh, products, with Chinese buses, is that they are cheap, but also the quality is very low. So we uh, try to compete uh, in this area, in um, mm, quality, especially. Thank you. Uh, yes, please. I would like to add uh, also uh, very serious about the China that uh, the, the customers really uh, uh, they are not evaluating, uh, evaluating the true cost of ownership and after sales service in uh, this, this in China companies now it's still still really delaying uh, yes in three five years they, they will catch up but uh, but now this this is really a gap of in after sales maybe maybe one word uh, they have very very uh, high uh, production capacity for example the bigger uh, chinese um, bus manufacturer uh, can manufacture about 500 buses per day so it's <laughs> not to beat and unbelievable unbelievable yes they are smiling because trains are too difficult to transport, but we will answer about that. So any business can't survive without two things. Uh, first of all, I think without logistics, but we will wait a little bit, but of course, uh, without fundings too. So Inga, could we ask you uh, to referate what we heard on the first panel uh, and now uh, about the new technologies which need, need fundings, what is going on in Three Seas region now at the moment? Oh, I cannot answer about uh, the entire Three Seas region at the moment. We, Lithu <laughs> Lithuania is a part of that. <laughs> yes, correct. So uh, first of all, I would like to introduce myself. I am Gabi Lunin, uh, Chief Business Development Officer and a member of the Executive Board of, at Invega. And uh, Invega is a so-called national promotional institution, uh, which is offering not subsidies. We are dealing or we are offering so-called financial instruments, uh, loans, guarantees, equity, equity investments. Uh, we are kind of mixture, to, to, to explain to Polish colleagues, we are kind of mixture of BGK and PFR. Uh, which are active in Poland. So we are doing everything they are doing. Uh, you, they have a kind of lending activity, uh, venture capital activity, etc., etc., separated. So if to come back to the funding, yes, I hear that now we, we need a lot of funding for innovation, for energy efficiency, for renewable energy, for actually green projects. So as a national promotional institution, which is aim, which aim is to uh, finance what private finances are not offering, uh, we are mainly focusing on uh, financing innovation, first of all. Uh, and if to tell you uh, the, the exact numbers which we are going to have or to offer to the market this year, it's 4 billion euros. So we are we are uh, quite small as to compare to, for example, BGK, but still for Lithuania, four billion euros, it's quite a substantive amount, you know. And most of those four billion euros will go for innovation, for digitalization, for energy efficiency, and for renewable energy. So for all the areas which we are talking, which were touched upon in the first panel, and we are talking right now. And what we can do, we can finance business and innovation in business, and we can finance infrastructure. Uh, in case of business, we are really offering various instruments, and uh, we are also uh, going to launch new, uh, some new, and the famous 1 billion euros uh, for business uh, instrument, which is going to be launched in April. 
Um, for example, such such company as Dancer or, or similar companies, they could apply for, for, for the loans which are going to be provided by us. In case of infrastructure, for example, LTG Infra, so we do not have instruments as yet, but we could do. And we, we are exploring the possibility of, of offering some funding to, to infrastructural projects in the future. And if to come back to Free Seas uh, region, uh, we are investor in, in, uh, in the first Free Seas Fund together with BGK and, and other, other country representatives or other countries' investors. And now we are, uh, it's not a secret, now we are talking or um, discussing the terms and the structure of the future potential successor fund of the uh, uh, Free Seas Infrastructure Fund. And I think this is a very good opportunity for the companies or for the projects to, to really uh, have uh, to receive an advantage of the cooperation of uh, several countries of, of, of the Free Seas region and the possibility to expand the funding and to, to finance really larger projects which, are, uh, which really needs, uh, needs funding for uh, especially though when we are talking about infrastructural projects which are really, really large, usually really, really large. So uh, last not, but not least, uh, so logistic. And uh, of course we heard from representative of our transport ministry that we are building roads. Uh, we are trying to develop partnership between our countries and we see big opportunities in this area. What is about logistic? If we will put the number from one to ten, at which benchmark we are? Uh, I would like to say uh, thank you uh, that you gave me uh, possibility to be here. Uh, my grandma, uh, grandpa, born next to Vilnius, so so it's my first time here. So very, very thank you. Uh, I re represent uh, CSL, it's logistic company, uh, it's family company from Poland. Uh, my mother uh, launched this company 26 years ago and we um, specialize in uh, sea transport, road transport, rail transport, uh, also custom agencies, not only in Poland. Uh, and uh, re regarding, um, maybe I will um, give some uh, uh, to you some example. Uh, we on our Scandinavian cl clients, uh, which we cooperate uh, since uh, actually from starts, but I will tell m maybe more about ten year last ten years. Uh, we were uh, responsible for distribution in Poland uh, in the first uh, few years. Uh, then our clients asked us about uh, distribution to some part of Germany, Czech, Slovakia. Uh, last two years uh, they are re really expand in Czech, Slovakia, Hungary and actually to almost all, all countries uh, on this map uh, except uh, Greece and uh, Estonia uh, and we noticed that um, the three four years ago the Czech volume was very small like um, five trucks per, uh, per, per, per month uh, for example uh, right now it's um, um, quite big volume uh, it's about I don't know 70,000 per year um, so uh, Lithuania right now it's like five trucks, uh, maybe ten uh, per 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 month. So um, yes, right now Lithuania, from my perspective, uh, it's on the start of of the way of uh, uh, trade, uh, uh, but in with big per perspective uh, because uh, all these countries are develop very fast uh, the, the markets are not huge but but they develop very fast and in next uh, probably five ten years uh, um, initiative like uh, 3 uh, can open um, uh, 
trade possibilities between our countries, uh, creates more solutions. And uh, for example, uh, we promote uh, Lithuania uh, in last uh, few months and uh, one of our pro regional producers, uh, uh, Grupa Azoty from Police, uh, found a partner in Lithuania and asked us about uh, rail transport. Uh, so, so we are in touch with LTG. So, so I, I estimate potential. For, um, it's extremely big, but for now, it's uh, the physical work. Uh, it's like from zero to ten. It's on set two or three points. Uh, it's it's sad, but it's true because uh, I heard that. If you have some parcel and you would like to send it to Subalke, it will go like three or four days because uh, first of all, its parcels goes to like Poznan and after that it's coming uh, coming to Poland. So it's it's a little bit sad, uh, but we will do our best to, to change to change this in in uh, in short future. Uh, Jan, I would like to come to you. We heard a lot of um, big discussion between to these gentlemen about uh, e-vehicles, like uh, e-buses. E what is about uh, like e-trains and what, what, uh, what target do you have now in, 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 this, in this area? Definitely I would say the train is practically e-train. Normally uh, most of the train are e electrical but of course we struggle, with the, we challenge uh, this and we see in rail sector the same problems as colleagues from the road transportation. And uh, PESA is following this strategy because we decided a few years ago, maybe six years ago, to change our strategy because we, we are the practically number two worldwide in the production of the diesel multiple units. Multiple units, that means the passenger trains, but based on the diesel drive. And so we uh, started with uh, uh, change, uh, with, with change uh, into the um, bridge solution, which was uh, that we, these are multiple units, we equip it with the stage five uh, emission standards. So we, 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 we call this type of the train as an eco train, but it is still a pollution train. And, uh, and we decided to go further. That mean uh, five years ago we decided to start to launch the project for the first uh, hydrogen locomotive, shunter locomotive, and we did it. We did it. Uh, we received uh, last year. We received the homologation of this uh, of this locomotive, and we now are ready to the production, uh, to design and production uh, hydrogen multiple units. That means the passenger train, which will be drive by batteries, including hydrogen drive. Hydrogen, it means electrical vehicles. Electrical vehicles, only on the board we have the uh, power. Power, it's, which is come from the zero emission electrolyzer, zero emission fuel cells, yeah? So we are now ready, and we expected in the next few uh, decades, so we started from the, for the years, of course, uh, we will be ready in 2026 to deliver the first multiple units, hydrogen multiple units to Poland, and we expected that the same will be offered in the whole region, of course. We are not the first one. Yeah? In the multiple units, we should know that the Germans are, are, are ahead of us, uh, French are ahead of us. We, we learn a lot, and we will be ready to, do, to deliver it in, in the in better, I think, conditions, because we offer not only the trains which we based on uh, drive like hydrogen or uh, battery, but including the uh, pantograph, so current collector. So the uh, optimization of the route, optimization of the exploitation be higher. This is the, the, the advantage we can deliver to the train. But in the point of the strategy, yes, we definitely are interested and we are green-oriented company now. Uh, Tommy, just uh, uh, we made a bridge to you in in logistic, in goods transportation, we had a lot of discussion between uh, transport companies and, and clients. Are we ready to pay for e-delivery with uh, electricity trucks? What is about in uh, rails? Are passengers, because you are working in B2C, are ready to pay more uh, to go green? 
That's quite a tricky question. <clears throat> Passenger perception, it's, uh, I think it's a number of researchers done all over the world and those researchers concluded in different answers. Of course, passengers are not ready to pay more. <laughs> never they are ready. But nevertheless, the understanding of um, sustainability and importance of the climate change uh, control, it's coming more and more to the population. And uh, it's not only a passenger decision to pay more or not to pay more, it's also a government decision or politi political decision and politics how these kind of um, directions are being supported. So basically, my answer would be passengers or private people are starting to understand that it might be more expensive, but nevertheless, they do require a quality, a speed, a um, comfortability. On the other hand, uh, politicians and financing bodies should support this initiative and provide certain compensation for this kind of increase. Talking about the electricity and electrical trains, so most probably most of you know that in Lithuania now we're performing it as infrastructure, the electrification project, which is a line between basically Konas and Klaipeda is being electrified. Such project in Lithuania was run, I believe, last time in 1977 or 1978. It's a huge one, and that will give lots of benefits in the sense of the um, sustainability. On the other hand, it's not all the network which is being electri electrified. Some branches are being left without the solution. Nevertheless, we will be testing the um, charging units which will be placed in those uh, branches and will allow to charge the electrical train that will be enough to cross over from one part of the line to another one and come back. If that is success, so we will expand this uh, solution for the rest of the branches, what we have here. So basically, we'll, let's call it hybrid branches. So yes, in total, as railways, we are going for electrification and sustainability. Let's come to logistic. Uh, each Wednesday, instead of this, I am going to my office to belly stock. I'm driving uh, benzene vehicle and I tried electric. So instead to arrive at 11 o'clock at the evening, I, with electric vehicle, I arrived at 3 o'clock at the night. So the thing is that you have to plan, to be ready, to have a, a network where to charge. Uh, what about uh, logistic and uh, opportunities like between free seas countries or maybe Lithuania and, and Poland? Uh, we have some parcels deliveries now in, in, in towns with uh, e-buses, e-vans. So maybe we can organize something between two countries and it could be good, uh, how to say, partnership. Uh, Przemek, what do you think? <coughs> I think uh, uh, yeah, regarding the small distance, like uh, uh, cities logistic or um, 50 kilometers far from cities, uh, uh, for sure it's good direction direction to go to for this type of e-transport uh, and the partnership. Of course, uh, I always uh, open for for such a partnerships. Szczecin uh, is very green city. Um, I think uh, for longer distance, um, um, I believe uh, more in hydrogen uh, uh, because um, the, the, I think PESA produce already uh, some hydrogen uh, and um, for the future, for, for long distance. I confirm. Yes, uh, that can give, uh, especially for train, uh, can give more advantage uh, because um, we don't need the electric uh, tr uh, traction, uh, so so even to build infrastructure uh, will be uh, faster, so so uh, may maybe cheaper. So so that also important. So for the short distance, um, uh, electric is very good, uh, and um, the direction is uh, I totally agree with this. Uh, but for long distance, um, this what I see right now uh, when when my partners uh, Scandinavian driving uh, uh, electric cars. Uh, so and they struggle with 
with they need to stop more often and and uh, they need to find space where to load uh, uh, i think much better will, will be hydrogen every wednesday i'm going and praying it will work charging station at uh, ocean or not <laughs> a small comment so real baltica will be a solution for your challenge <laughs> it will be already planned for you safe and electricity will be always there waiting up opportunity to go by train and to work on my laptop during this this road uh inga we have some crazy ideas how to make a partnership or to develop a business relationship between between countries free sea countries or maybe lithuania and poland uh if we will have some idea uh could we use the in vegas uh, funding on that <laughs> Funding is not always the solution, you know, you, you already discussed and I heard the, the discussions uh, during the first panel about the necessity of laws or uh, other legal acts, you know, which, 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 uh, which might solve uh, some, some uh, problems or situations or encourage, encourage uh, the changes in the transport infrastructure and the um, usage of uh, electric uh, cars or electric electric buses or electric you know trains so uh, funding is a solution when it you need funding you know <laughs> when you need to buy something when you need to to uh, build something when you need uh, an equipment or, or something like that so uh, if we can help with the funding in specific uh, situations or in specific cooperation projects of course we can we can uh, as a lithuanian national promotional institution we are uh, mainly offering funding for lithuanian companies or for those who are exporting but they the exporters are uh, from lithuania we are having some uh, not discussions but thoughts not only discussions but also thoughts and then uh, developing some ideas on how to help uh Ukraine or Moldova or other neighboring countries, you know, but still we don't have anything to offer in that uh, in that sense. But in general, if if it's a Lithuanian business which is going to expand abroad or which wants or which needs investments in Lithuania, we can always help. And of course, especially as I mentioned, if it's an investment, uh, innovative investment or innovative project or R and D even involving project or you know, energy efficiency project. It's we we are offering funding for that. So really, if as I mentioned, if uh, the funding is a solution, then yes, we can help. Martin, let's discuss about that. Uh, Alvidas will go to Invega, will get uh, funding, uh, will develop his uh, very good idea because uh, Alvidas bus I tried three years ago, I think. In, in Klaipeda, in your buses, we tried uh, in our forum uh, last year, at the end of the last year. Could you please tell, uh, you are from Poland, from a big country, yeah? I think for Alvidas, this country could be very, um, be interesting, and it could be big opportunities. What kind of advices, or you would like to scare it, scare it not to go there so this is uh we would like to be practical at this discussion panel so please tell us your opinion your advices or your possibilities for alvidas to, to go to poland well po poland is a very big market as you said and very hot market now um for now uh, i think uh, every big city is interested in zero emission technologies uh, they started uh, and they start especially from zero emission transport uh, it's uh, uh, not too hard to interest uh, the ma majors or mayors of the cities uh, of uh, these uh, technologies uh, so um, it if it is an alternative alternative um, for asian um, products and Asian um, um, technology, uh, it's a good point um, to start. Uh, I think that uh, till 2030, uh, when every new um, city bus uh, have to be zero emission, 
uh, there is uh, so uh, many um, so wide uh, um, area to uh, trade that uh, everyone especially from European Union from the three uh, seas initiative uh, region have a chance uh, to start to start uh, for now it's important to break the hegemony of um, Chinese uh, manufacturers and suppliers uh, and we can go together um, I think there is uh, possible the cooperation uh, in the um, three seas uh, economic region area yeah of course Alvides, please uh, have advice you how to beat China. You can open the representative office of Taiwan in Warsaw. <laughs> uh, now we know uh, who is responsible. Teltonica, <laughs> <laughs> Teltonica. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean from from the beginning we were avoiding the the parts from China, uh, and now we are happy. Uh, but uh, at a fight with with our with our uh, you know, prices with with with, uh, with China China guys uh, without the support of European Commission it's impossible. So I I, I know that uh, that there is the not rumors but real real steps now uh, in European Commission regarding the anti dumping uh, rules uh, regarding uh, the support from China government for the all producers of, of electric vehicles. So they are coming with reduced 50% prices, of production prices. So uh, it's, it's quite attractive uh, uh, instrument uh, for, the, for, the, for the money for the local uh, commie voyageurs, I, I mean traders, because not China going into the Poland. Uh, Poland really pulling up the China producers to step in. The same happening in Lithuania, the same in Germany. So, but we are, you know, in we are really living in in the uh, free market zone, where where we have our rules, uh, and uh, unfortunately, uh, this procurement uh, rules mentioned by Martin uh, doesn't help us. Uh, uh, from the perspective of, of sustainability, because. Uh, when water traveling from Italy and from, from south of Spain in, in the bottle, small bottle to Lithuania, I think it is most awful, awful thing happening. We need to drink water here. We need to bake uh, bread here. We need to, to, to create the production with very high uh, added value here, not moving around. So then we will solve a lot of transportation and logistic problems. But uh, yeah, uh, we always living in uh, how to say sometimes in the in the space, uh, and even even our law. When you asked Jurgis before uh, about alternative fuel law, uh, it's already how to say it's forgotten because it's it does it doesn't work in reality. It's you know flying somewhere in space and 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 that's it. And uh, joke, you know, from from Soviet time, from former Soviet time, about about the dead horse. Uh, maybe uh, some of the older people people know. Practically, uh, uh, I mean, theoretically, horse and and practically kind of stand up. So this this happens in our uh, European uh, environment now, uh, and we uh, not. Um, and also the globalization. Uh, I mean, the brand trading uh, is is dominating here uh, more than United in the United States, uh, more than in China. In Europe, is dominating brand trading. You know, and uh, the global companies making a lot of money. So I mean, uh, and the barriers uh, with with procurement laws and everything is just you know brainwashing. So sorry about that, but some someone should uh, uh, should take a little bit sharp sharper conversation today, uh, and <laughs> and uh, uh, what's regarding our cooperation. Poland, by the way, uh, 
didn't mention this is the biggest uh, city bus market in Europe, the biggest dominating. Uh, more than 115,000 buses in the streets. Comparing the closest one, Italy, it's 100,000. Germany has only 65. So market is interesting. And uh, our supply chain from, from, from Poland, about 20% of the goods we are buying from Poland. So it's, we are already cooperating. And we, we think that uh, uh, the, uh, when we're talking uh, about the decisions in political level, this is one. Uh, when we're talking about the decision in the business level, this is, this is second. And when we're talking about the, the governance uh, laws and everything, it's the third thing. And uh, uh, for us, uh, free seas countries, uh, the main target will be to invest in, into, into the goods where we can create here and, and go step to sustainability. I mean, to have instrument, uh, not the apple. Thank you. We were not agreed with uh, Lvidas before, but he made very uh, good conclusion on that. So uh, first of all, we need to focus what we can do in this free seas region and what we can share uh, between each other. But uh, Przemek, I would like to return it to lo logistic and this uh, uh, I would say, a remark what you told that it's uh, it's not developed uh, already. What do you think? First of all, it should come logistic, or should uh, this uh, our will to buy local products? I I think the um, war in EU, Ukraine changed a few things uh, because um, it's also security. Uh, so uh, we need to think how to secure our business. Uh, it's not only just how to earn or how much we will earn, but um, to have business in the next few years. Uh, so I think we, we should, um, I see for also for our clients, they, they, they move some cargo from China to uh, uh, divide uh, for other countries uh, as well uh, to, to keep uh, business moving not not to be rely on the on on chinese market or on uh, uh, transport from china it's uh, it's very far uh, so i um, the best uh, option uh, is to to rely on our products uh, uh, from secure secure site uh, rely on our pr products uh, because if something happened, uh, for example, I buy pass from China or or I, I buy pass from you. If something happened with this bus, um, I can contact with uh, Vilna or with, with Warsaw, not um, in Chinese office. Uh, so so uh, um, the service will should be faster and and um, uh, um, the buses should be work uh, in next few hours, for example, not a few weeks. Uh, so so yes, we should more re rely on our uh, products, but also mm, like in business uh, the price is very important uh, um, that's why mm, uh, the price and possibilities uh, that's why i really pu push uh, uh, business to to always be on few legs to be secure not only uh, let's go for chinese market or or, or polish lithuanian market let's stay on few legs and three three c's uh, initiative uh, give uh, uh, for logistic few legs, few few solutions. Uh, if Polish ports, for example, will will extremely busy, uh, I have alternatives uh, to to transports via uh, your ports. Uh, if uh, road transports, uh, Poland, Lithuania, Latvia, Romania, we are leaders in road transports. Uh, but uh, if um, they will struggling, uh, we we can al always go on second leg. So rail transports. Uh, I really fight for rail tra transports in our company to move cargo, to move cargo from from uh, road to to to, to rail. Uh, 
and every year we 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 transport more more by road our company so so but but um, no, north south connections uh, the initiatives uh, are especially based on on uh, uh, intermodal trailers, uh, swap bodies, uh, so uh, we need to do small steps how to move cargo, not not build a uh, thousand connections per year, but maybe one per week uh, with some small uh, quantity of cargo and, and starts from small steps. This is what we are doing right now. Uh, yes, and... and uh, um, and then develop this business, but uh, we need to remember about uh, security. So, Przemyslov, uh, start uh, how our uh, we we don't want to keep our audience from lunch. So, few sentences in, in in conclusion, and uh, and let's go to have a yes, network. For, yeah, thank you. Uh, for conclusion, uh, uh, present brand new. It's not idea, but. Uh, uh, the mind really where where we should stress on uh, in in all three seas region uh, it we we should really invest a lot of money and a lot of our intelligence in into the energy storage devices this is the future and don't think about anything this is like the bank for the money electricity needs this this is most liquid uh, energy source in the world in few milliseconds, few times around the world, but need to store this and just focus. And all politicians and Polish guys and colleagues, I ask to really to say where the crucial for the mass development is the electricity storage. Thank you. Some sentence. Okay, the last sentence. Um, well, governments uh, should um, support uh, cities, support mayors. Uh, to make uh, them aware uh, that they should start the Green Revolution and they should um, support, firstly, uh, good transparent law uh, and secondly, subsidies uh, supporting the cities in their decisions uh, to start Green Revolution and, and it's very simple, that's all in my opinion. From our perspective, from the business of rail industry, uh, we need the governments to support uh, all activities to bring the people to the rail, to bring the goods to the rail. The good idea was uh, from Germany coming to origin because the German don't want to build new mo motorways and they decided that all the freight transportation shipped into the rail sector. This is the huge demand for it now. Manufacturers of the wagons are very lucky of it, yeah, because they, they lack of such type of the wagons to transport the trailers and so on. We will be, uh, we, I would say that we will be very happy if, if governments will help us to encourage uh, people to going back to the trains. If you look at this map, this map is very interesting. Firstly, because of the, for example, we are very concerned about the China. Yeah, China needs access to the Europe. Road sick is via yeah, strictly our fence, strictly Europe. This is the vertical limitation. So China needs us to be able to deliver any goods here to the Europe, to the like in the countries like Germany, like 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 France. So we have important role here, and our politicians should do it. Yeah, how can we use it to our policy to more attractive to to receive the money for it? And of course, we are very interested to encourage the people to come back to the trains because it's a uh, greenest mode as ever established i mean rail, uh, rail transportation yeah uh, but in comparison to our western countries we we are carrying here a few people just imagine small country like Bulgaria, 20 million people passenger per year small country like czech republic 200 million people passenger per year. Big country like Poland, 360 million passenger per year. What does it mean, big country? In India, three days of the transportation. The scale is very important. Thank you very much. So just to add to what uh, the, other, the other colleagues told, actually, we need a cooperation. Still, even 
I heard my like listening to even myself. I was telling Lithuania, Lithuania. We are national uh, promotional institution of Lithuania, etc. So actually, we are m very much still very much focused on our countries. And the three C's cooperation or three C's initiative is a cooperation initiative. So we have to have more cooperation to have one large region instead of a uh, few few small countries. And uh, really, the cooperation will bring us where we wish to be and will, will really help us to have larger projects, larger, larger, larger region, larger countries, la larger, larger funding, etc. Everything, you know, everything we will have when, even when we cooperate. So I started and I will end, yes. <clears throat> Uh, financiation, many was said, much was said, and yes, we need financiation, we need all sort of help to finance the infrastructure. Cooperation, I also wanted to touch that one, yes, cooperation is the key key here, and actually Lithuanian infrastructure and Polish infrastructure cooperation could be brought as an example. Never ever have been better like it is now. So if that could be multiplied, that would solve most of the problems. Then regulation. For example, lately there was European Parliament approved a super heavy um, truck usage in Europe, which brings a number of questions why. We are talking about shift to rail, and here we are talking about ability to go with the super heavy trucks in Europe. Even when uh, Rail Freight Forward Research Group actually provided some data on uh, railway transportation, if we would be able to move to or shift to rail by, by 2030, we would avoid approximately 40,000 premature deaths due to the pollution. And five, four to 5,000 deaths per year on the roads due to the collisions with the heavy vehicles. I think this is what it says. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for my, my panelists. Thank you for audience. And let's go to partnership.